Hello and welcome back to The Broken Past. Today we've got a small project to take a look at. Um, I picked it up off of eBay, came in today, and I couldn't wait to open it up and, and see what we had to deal with. So, I've already opened up the packaging, but I haven't quite looked at it yet. We have a yellow Game Boy Pocket. I picked this thing up on eBay for pretty cheap. I think it was... 20 or 25 dollars uh, US. In the pictures it didn't look too bad and it doesn't look too bad in person either. Um, the screen really doesn't have much for scratches on it. There's a little bit of something sticky there we'll have to fix. Uh, it's got a little bit of dirt and stuff in there. Looks like there's some around here as well. And it also smells like it. I don't know maybe it's been sitting in a in a moist basement for I don't know for a long time. It's got kind of that damp uh, smell to it. Um, in the listing though they said it didn't work it wouldn't boot up um, but let's let's throw a few batteries in it and we will try to see what happens the power switch is turned on so we'll look in here I'm not sure if this will show up very well on any one of these cameras but it looks like there might be a little bit of corrosion in here maybe a little bit on the back of the battery cover as well so it might be that it the usual suspects of having batteries in it that sat too long and leaked a little bit in there. But let's just, looks like there's a little bit of a bend too on this on that terminal in there, which probably doesn't help. But we should still get a good enough connection to be able to try that out maybe. And let's see what happens when we turn it on. Sure enough, I have nothing. Yep, most definitely not going to turn on. It also doesn't appear to be an issue with the power switch. Sometimes if the power switch is getting kind of you know, corroded and, and gunky, you might have a little bit of flicker in there. But in our case, it looks like we have nothing. But that's okay. I bought it knowing that it wasn't going to work. I was kind of hoping I'd get lucky, but that's okay. So let's do the usual. Let's tear it apart and see what we have to work with on the inside. All right, before I take the back cover off, um, you can see here, it's hard to tell and I'm not sure how well it shows in the video. There's a little bit of bump. Like the, the sticker back here doesn't feel like it's worn. It feels like it's gotten wet. Um, as well as obviously the plastic sticker below it. So I wonder if this didn't sit in some water or got in a really damp situation. Which is why it kind of has that, that musty sort of moldy smell to it. Um, I don't know. But let's cross our fingers. We can open it up. And there isn't too much. Maybe just a little bit of corrosion we have to work with on the inside. We can also see all that, there's definitely some black stuff around here. I'm really, really curious all the way around if that's not, hopefully that's not mold or something growing in there, because it's definitely pretty sticky. Or maybe it got pop spilled on it. That is really sticky. All right. So first glance, at least on the back side, it doesn't look too bad. Let's take out the screws holding the motherboard in place and take a look at the back side. And of course, let's not forget to remove the ribbon cable. And so really, even from this side, it does not look bad. So 
That's interesting. So there's not a lot of corrosion on the board. I kind of half expected there to be something based on some of the battery, the terminals, but it's really not bad. So we do have our fuse down here, F1. We can check that and see if we have continuity across that fuse. We've got it in continuity. Let's check for continuity on this fuse. We do have continuity, so that's good. Another thing I want to check is these battery terminals here, the ones that have a little bit of corrosion on them, and see if it's potentially an issue with these. So if I check, this is exactly what I would have thought. Let's see if that shows up. Let's see if I can do this here. If I check here between these back pads, And get a good connection here. You can tell we've got solid continuity, but if I do it against the spring, we don't have any continuity. So to me, that makes it sound like this is the culprit. So what's happening is, um, so we got positive and negative. So the terminals on, let's see if I can get stuff out of the way here, on the board, you need to ultimately have continuity between this pin and the negative of the backside, and then the positive of the backside to the negative here. So we need to have full continuity all the way around. And when we lose that, on here, we lose our voltage for the Game Boy. So again, this works but it's really spotty uh, once we hit the spring, where the spring connects to this piece here. There's gotta be some corrosion there that's messing with that. So I'm going to pause the video quick, take this piece out, and go give this a good clean, and I'll be right back. All right, so a couple minutes with the toothbrush, and I think it came out pretty good. Um, still a little bit of rust and stuff on the back that we'll still deal with, but I just wanted to really quickly I hit it with the toothbrush real fast to see if this ultimately was the problem. So all the front came out pretty good. Um, all the corrosion and grime and stuff around the connector here seems to have gotten uh, gotten taken care of. So let's test it really quick with our multimeter and see if that's fixed our problem. So again, we're still continuity mode. Testing across the plate, got a pretty solid connection which we didn't have before. Um, and testing with the spring. Looks like we are good all the way around. So really quickly, before I clean it up, I'm just gonna sit this back in and try it out and see if ultimately this ended up being our problem. So. Put our batteries in. And let's see if that was the only problem. Okay, so that one it's not the only issue. I feel like this might also be an issue here in that not getting good conductivity here. So I'm gonna see about hitting that real quick with the toothbrush. Let's see if that was enough to make a difference.
Okay, so I think that made enough of a difference. Let's put the cover back on once more and give it one more shot. Okay. Nope. So it looks like we do also have a flaky power switch, but it does appear to be working. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a game real quick, see if it reads it. Looks like I'm gonna have to kind of feather the power switch to make it work. There we go. Still is not reading the game. I'm going to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and wet the contacts on the cartridge. And use that to kind of clean the pens a little bit. again. And there we go. Let's make sure that on the video. Okay. Well, so that's great news that this is working. So it looks like we've kind of had, what is that, four small issues. We had corrosion on the spring on this side, as well as corrosion on the pad on this side. Um, the power switch needs a little bit of work, and the contacts in the cartridge slot were dirty. But all of that can be fixed with just a little bit of elbow grease. So at this point, the battery is back out. Take the gross <laughs> case back apart. Actually, I might try really quick grabbing a bit more IPA. Just seeing if I can drip it into the power switch, if this is all that's going to be needed to clean up this power switch. Work it back and forth a little bit. Curious to give this one more try. Once again, throw the batteries back in. Let's see if this is any better. Looks like that might be helping. Let's try it out once more. There we go. Seems to be much more responsive now on the power switch. So great, that is, that is great news. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video once more. Don't need to have you come along with me, but I'm gonna take this apart and I'm just gonna give everything a good scrub and we'll put it all back together when we're done. So again, I will be right back. All right, so it's been about 24 hours or so since we took this thing apart. Uh, since then, I've cleaned it um, it's pretty much as good as I think I can get, and I think it turned out pretty well. Got rid of all the black marks around the edges, stuff in the back, some of the black on the front, um, and gave it a good amount of time to air out 
um, cause it get rid of that sort of that musty wet smell that it had. And I think overall, uh, it came out exceptionally clean. I was a little bit worried with a lot of the black and the scuff and the stickiness that it wasn't going to come apart. There was even, I think it's pretty much gone. There's even like a big sticky spot in here. So I don't know if this thing had gotten dropped, you know, and pop or had a pop spilled on it or something or what happened, but we were able to get all of that cleaned up out of there. Um, also went ahead and cleaned up all the buttons and everything else while we were at it. So at this point, we are ready to reassemble and uh, cross our fingers that everything is still working great. So, um, oh, and I also stuck this in some vinegar for a while to get rid of the rest of the corrosion. There's still a little bit of rust on the back. Um, that's not a huge deal. At least we got all of the, the bluish green corrosion out of there and we have good contacts on here. So everything should be working well. Um, so we'll reassemble it and we will test it at that point. So here we go. Got it all back together. Um, definitely looks a million times better than it was before. Uh, so let's throw some batteries in and let's give it a shot and make sure it's still working. And here we go. Beautiful. And there we go. Like I said, I bought this thing broken for parts. Uh, I was listed as wooden boot. Um, couldn't get it working. And really the solution was pretty easy. Uh, to kind of recap, we had a couple of corroded battery terminals as well as some dirty contacts on the cartridge slot and the power switch needed a little bit of cleaning as well. But once that was done, this thing works beautifully. So pretty easy fix overall. So, so far we've done the teal and the yellow. Uh, hoping to get the other three colors here sometime soon. Hoping to pick up those broken as well so we can fix those on video and have a full set once we're all done. So anyway, I know this was a short and sweet video, but hopefully this helped to inspire you if you have a Game Boy Color that appears to not be working. Hopefully it gives you the confidence to take it apart and get it up and running and make it good as new again. Please let me know in the comments down below if you attempted this and what your results were. I'd love to hear your successes as well. So once again, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot, and bye-bye.